this video, I'll walk you through some of the important changes we've made in edit mode that sets it apart from the classic client. And we'll take a closer look at the materials component. Now I'm gonna go ahead and open up my shiny jacket that I've been working on. InView Studio is organized into five main panels. The first, the component panel, which holds the main building blocks of, in this case, an avatar, materials, meshes, and actions. The asset panel is a reference for all the elements that you've brought into your project. And it's also the place where you can import assets for later use, Cal3D, FBX, or texture files. The inspector panel on the right holds all the settings for whatever component you have chosen on the left. In this case, each material has its own inspector settings panel. The inventory panel holds all of the products that you own that you can bring into your project at any time for reference. And lastly, the info panel, where you'll find all of the product-related data you need to fill out before you submit your product for publish. Now let's take a closer look at the material components. Materials will import defaulted to their texture name, but now in InView Studio you have the ability to change that name to whatever you want for better organization. It doesn't change the file name of the texture map, just the material component inside the draft project you're working on. I'm also really excited to announce that we finally have undo and redo history within Studio. Click Undo or Command or Control Z and it does what you expect it to. Hovering over a texture swatch will show you a larger reference. And you can now easily unassign any texture map from the drop down menu. Remember, any change you make still needs to be previewed by hitting the preview button at the top of the screen. In Studio, we've employed better asset security than in the classic client. It takes a little bit longer to preview and that's because your assets are encrypted round trip to the server and back. Parent assets do not get stored locally on a user's machine. Studio has two new texture slots, one for normal map and one for a shininess map. Now that's how I'm getting this nice interactive sheen on my shiny jacket. We've cleaned up the transparency settings a bit so now, if you don't have a transparency loaded, you can only choose Additive Blend. If you do have an opacity map loaded, then it defaults to Composite Blending, which is the best blending setting for the best results. Alpha Test Transparency has been left in for compatibility with the old client. And there are still some special cases when you might want to use it. For example, if you're having depth sorting issues with vegetation, fences, or billboards in rooms, Alpha Test will usually solve those issues if you don't need to get up too close to the object. You've probably noticed a few new switches, namely Cast and Receive Shadows. We're currently working on shadow casting spotlights in a future release of InView Studio Beta. We've added some texture management features to InView Studio. To add a texture asset, simply click on Assign Texture from the drop-down menu, or click on the thumbnail itself. This brings up a texture management pop-up where you have access to all of the textures that you've previously loaded into the project. You can instantly assign any texture by just clicking on it. To load a new texture into the project, click on the plus button. And to add a texture directly to the channel, click on Add Image and load your texture in. Want to go back to a previous texture? Just select it. Now it's important to note that these texture panels are movable and they're independent. You can have a texture panel open for each channel for reference and comparison. And that's it for materials. We'll continue exploring other panels in edit mode in the next video.